Welcome to the Octavius Gould Experience, and I am your host, Octavius Gould. Today, I'm excited to bring to you episode 31 titled, Is a College Degree Worth It? You all know by now that on Friday, the Supreme Court struck down President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. This action caused tremendous debate on both sides of the aisles and across America. With that said, my podcast is business related, so I'll refrain from inserting my personal imp- opinion into the fray. As the CEO of a leadership development firm and executive coach, I engage corporate professionals and entrepreneurs regularly. And on several occasions, I've been asked by people without a college degree if I felt that they should pursue their degree either as a first-time student or returning adult student who only completed a few college credits years ago or even decades ago. I guess the main level of uncertainty for most people is whether or not returning to college as an adult is worth the cost. This topic is very fascinating to me. You may wonder why. It's because I went to the University of Florida on a football scholarship in in 1986 then transferred to the University of Minnesota. But when injuries prematurely ended my football career a year before going to the NFL, I left college early without a college degree. I became a college football statistic, and that's not a good thing. I can recall my wonderful mother providing me with words of comfort by telling me that I should be proud of what I accomplished as a football player. But what really struck me was her request of my promise that one day I would return to college to earn my college degree. For those who may be compelled to drop off of this episode early for some reason, I'll share with you now, I did fulfill that promise that I made to my mother by earning my college degree at the age of 43. So now I'll discuss what happened between ages 21 to 43 that may actually help many of you if you're ever confronted with the tough decision of whether or not to return to college or go to college for the first time as an adult. But first, it's no secret that the value of college degrees is declining in in America. A competitive labor market coupled with ballooning college tuition costs has created a tipping point in the perceived value of college degrees. For example, the Burning Glass Institute reported that the percentage of jobs requiring a college degree, and bear with me as I look at the notes that I put on my phone preparing for this episode, fell from 51% in 2017 to 44% in 2021. And according to a Gallup poll, the percentage of U.S. adults ages 18 to 29 who view college education as very important dropped from 74% to 41% over the past six years. One key dynamic with these trends are companies like IBM, Apple, Delta, and good paying small businesses who no longer require a college degree for an interview. Yes, many companies still use applicant tracking systems that will redirect a resume into that black hole, which significantly reduces their talent pool. But more organizations realize today that the mindsets, abilities, and skills gained from life experiences can be as valuable as university diplomas in today's fast-changing business world. I wasn't surprised to learn while preparing for this compelling episode that there's conflicting data related to how much a person will earn with a college degree versus without one. And according to research from multiple universities, the lifetime earning potential of workers with bachelor's degrees was 2.8 million. Without a degree, the expected earning power dropped to 1.6 million. But in other studies, my friends, college graduates in some northern U.S. states were found to earn no more than high school graduates. Plus, they must work about 20 years more to recoup the cost of their tuition. That's actually money they could use to purchase a home or for investments. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 
the average worker changes jobs 12 times in their career. That's why both on the job and even general life experiences is actually so critical and important. Experience often advances new ways of thinking and develop skills that aren't necessarily constrained to a specific job. People can leverage what they gain from internships, volunteering, volunteering, extracurricular activities, and more to build assets relevant to new career opportunities. For example, when I started my career at MCI Telecommunications in 1993, the hiring authorities told me that I had to start at the bottom of the totem pole. I actually thought it was because I lacked a college degree at that time, but I later learned that they feared during the interviewing process that I may have been one of those cocky former college athletes, so they wanted to make me earn everything. Little did they know that it was my experience as a college athlete that actually gave me an advantage over most of the more experienced professionals in that 800 person business to business call center, many of whom had earned their college degree from prestigious universities. So when making me that low offer of an annual salary of just $13,000 a year plus commission, MCI telecommunications couldn't account for one, the drive and determination that I acquired while playing college football. Two, my ability to overcome adversity while maintaining a positive mindset. And three, my unmatched work ethic. Those experiences were key to creating a foundation for me that would become inspiration to my success. But I do applaud and applaud and love MCI Telecommunications for opening the door of opportunity for me by giving me a chance to learn and prove myself on the job. In five years, I earned five promotions without a college degree. I went from a telecommunications telemarketing sales representative to Southeast Regional Sales Manager, leading five sales managers and 60 outside sales professionals in a five-state region. Some of you may wonder how. You see, my friends, I knew what I didn't know. More importantly, I was committed to excellence, which meant that I had to compensate for not having a college degree by focusing on self-development. I was in HR's office every month trying to ascertain what training classes I could attend. I know I just drove them crazy because I wanted to make sure that every opportunity to develop my core competencies, I was there. And I didn't sit in the back, I sat in the front because I wanted to pay attention, I wanted to learn, I wanted to get better. Once I became a manager towards the end of my second year, I took advantage of every leadership development course and seminar available. It was a no brainer because it was free. While some managers who had college degrees declined courses, I developed those core competencies, as I mentioned. I laugh because I still have all of those hard copy management training manuals in my home office from the 90s. And I peruse that content on a regular basis to remind myself of the things that I should do and shouldn't do and to leverage some of the content to help coach executives and high potential professionals who are looking to get into management themselves. Today, there are so many organizations that have created learning and development departments. We call them L&D departments. These highly certified professionals deliver learning content and resources to train new hires and tenured employees continuously. Their mission is to create programs directly focused on fulfilling their company's emerging talent needs. This even includes tuition reimbursement for employees who aspire to earn their college degrees as an adult. And programs like that are very important because another alarming statistic out of the studies that I read, this one by the University of Washington, reported that after graduating, approximately 53% of college students are either unemployed or working in a job 
that didn't require a degree. Today's business world is changing faster than most college curriculums. A bachelor degree used to be the yellow brick road to an interview. Then companies started adding to their job postings the phrase MBA preferred. But there's a shift happening that sees more organizations evaluating job candidates based on their significant experience. But what happens when the job, job finalists all have significant experience that is essential to forecast success? What happens when companies need to weed out job candidates because 500 people apply to their job openings? And sometimes those job requisitions will get 600, 700 people with half of those folks not even being qualified as it relates to their lack of experience for the role. And what happens once you climb the corporate ladder to the level of becoming a vice president and companies overlook your experience because their policy is to only employ leaders who they term as educated or being educated, those who have bachelor's degrees and preferably master degrees. I was in that boat myself once I became a vice president of sales prior to earning my college degree. I was actually interviewing for a high paying VP of sales role with a very reputable, impressive Fortune 1000 organization. I checked all the boxes and more except one. I had yet to earn my college degree. My situation was different because I had attended college for almost three years for free on a football scholarship. So when the CEO got to page two of my resume during the interviewing process, that was definitely headed to me receiving a great offer. I saw the CEO pause and he asked me in a very shockingly way, did you not earn your college degree, Octavius? I replied, no, sir. But my goal is to finish one day. My career as an entrepreneur and vice president of sales consisted of a lot of traveling, which made it almost impossible to return to college. And I knew at that moment that my procrastinating my procrastination excuse me on returning to college had just caused me to miss out on a, an amazing executive position with a salary that would have been almost $50,000 more than what I was already earning as a VP of sales at that time for a smaller company that right there, my friends, is a notch in the belt for why having a college degree is important. Now, I overcame that disappointment of being rejected for that awesome role quickly because I had already proven myself that I could be successful in corporate America without a college degree. I also had an entrepreneurial spirit, so I leveraged the mindset of just to go out there and continue building my own dream before someone hired me to build theirs. So I bounced back up and I continued pursuing my dreams as an entrepreneur. That couldn't be that bad since I had already lived the entrepreneurial lifestyle without a college degree and had secured consulting agreements with several of America's top Fortune 1000 corporations who probably would have bypassed me as a job candidate because I didn't have a college degree in my back pocket, but they did business with me as an entrepreneur. That's ironic, right? At that point in time, they really didn't care. They didn't focus on what I had acquired myself. They were more focused on the value or value proposition of my business. What value could I bring to their organization and if I would provide a great ROI return on investment. But there were times with my friends when I found myself being at networking events as an entrepreneur and I was networking with high profile professionals, CEOs at various companies in Atlanta. And I would be asked a question, where did you graduate? Because people would assume based on the way I carried myself, I guess, or information that they may have perused on LinkedIn that I had a college degree. And it was somewhat embarrassing to have to say, no, I haven't graduated yet. And then I would give the story sometimes about 
getting injured and my career prematurely ending ending in college due to uh, injuries. But at the end of the day, in many cases, I felt ashamed more so because as I mentioned before, my college education at that particular time when I was a college athlete was for free. You know, it was coming that argument that some of the most successful people in the world do not have a college degree. And there are many, and this is that, here you go for the folks who believe that college isn't overly important or having a degree isn't going to prevent them from being successful. And in many cases, they're correct, but not all cases. But here are some of the folks who you may recognize who do not have a college degree. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard in 20 and actually 2004 to become the founder and CEO of Facebook. Another person is the late Steve Jobs who left college after just six months to focus on his business. You all have heard of Apple, right? Then you have Richard Branson. He founded Virgin Airlines, and I think they're now called Virgin Group or Virgin Group. And I know he's worth about $4 billion or more without a college degree. I know you all heard of Bill Gates. Did you know that Bill dropped out of Harvard only to, to become the fourth richest man in the world? Oh, there are more folks who made it to an incredible level of success without a college degree, also include Walt Disney and Byler. I think her name is pronounced. She's the founder of Antes and Pretzels, Michael Dell. And I actually use a Dell laptop. Debbie Fields, the founder of Mrs. Fields Cookies. Henry Ford, numer numerous rappers, including Jay-Z. And the list goes on. But then you have to keep in mind that those individuals who made it to an incredible level of success had incredible work ethic, a level of creativity that generated an amazing idea that in many cases disrupted their marketplace. But then there are super successful professionals who left college just to return years later to earn their degree as well. You have Steven Spielberg who left, I think it was, and if I look at my notes again, Cal State in 1960, but later earned his degree in 2002, 2002. You also have Oprah who left Tennessee State. And I think she was one credit shy of completing her four-year degree in 1975. I'm almost quite sure that's what I read, but returned later to graduate with the class of 1986. That's impressive just as the others I mentioned. And there are so many professional athletes who return to college years later or decades later to earn a degree after having left as multimillionaires, such as my friend and former teammate Emma Smith at the University of Florida, Michael Jordan, Venus Williams, Aaron Donald, who plays for the Rams, Steph Curry, who plays for the Warriors. And I think Steph graduated in 2022, Michelle Kwan, and the one known as Shaq. I'm not sure what motivates a multimillionaire to return to college as an adult to finish what they started. However, I know why I returned to college at the age of 42 for two years to earn my business management degree from the University of Minnesota. It was because of my double P, promise and purpose that promise that I made to my mother when I left college at 21 and my purpose as in my two wonderful daughters. I actually found myself helping my oldest daughter with her homework and instilling in her the importance of education. And as I finished, I felt as if I hit a brick wall. The reality of me being a hypocrite smacked me right in the face. Here I am telling her, 
to keep striving, to remain on honor roll because it was important for her to get into college and other things that I was telling her. How could I sit there with a straight face and tell my daughter all of these things and that college would be the path to career options and financial stability when I was a college dropout at the time? Better yet, as I mentioned before, one who was on a football scholarship. Now, they weren't paying us like they're paying athletes today, but the education was still free. The next day after that conversation with my oldest daughter, who actually attends college now, I actually called the University of Minnesota to ascertain how to go about returning to the university. I submitted the required information for a preliminary review. And I can remember a couple of days later speaking to the person in admissions and then to a counselor. And she was befuddled because she said, Octavius, you're a successful entrepreneur. Why would you want to return to college at age, 20, at age 42? I actually think she was looking at my GPA <laughs> and trying to find a nice way to tell me, stay put, keep your day job. <laughs> but I tried to articulate to her how important it was for me to finish what I had started for those reasons that I mentioned um, a little while ago. The day I received my official documents showing that I had graduated with my business management degree from the University of Minnesota at age 42, at age 43, excuse me, I cried like a baby. Because at that time, I had fulfilled the three Ps, not just the two. Promise, promise fulfilled, purpose initiated with my daughters, and my personal satisfaction. And that was extremely important to me. At that point in time, it wasn't about my career because I had already reached a level of success as a vice president of sales without a degree. I had already found it and developed relationships as an entrepreneur with Fortune 1000 companies. So this was all about what was important to me as a person as a son who made a promise to his mother decades ago, and as a father who, were, who was trying to instill certain values into the lives of his daughters. So in closing, I purposely contradicted myself on this episode on the question of, is a college degree worth it? I am one of the unique professionals whose journey in both corporate America and entrepreneurship has existed without a college degree and as a college graduate. I feel strongly that a person can be successful without a degree as well as with a college degree. The road may be rockier without a degree. Less doors may open without a degree. The discrimination that still exists in America may be easier for companies to cover up if you don't have a degree. You may even be the first person to arrive or the last person to leave if you don't have a college degree. But you will get noticed for those actions and that will compensate for you not having that degree and set you apart from others regardless of their educational status. And that's how you differentiate yourself. And that's what I did early in my career. Now, they didn't know I was showing up first because I didn't have a car at age, I guess, 23 at the time when I worked at MCI, I was catching the bus. And that's the only time that I could arrive either on time or early. So I made sure I was the first one in the building. I left after everyone else because I didn't want them to see me getting on the bus or at the bus stop. But they still don't know that unless they're listening to this podcast episode. But it worked for me. A kid without a college degree showing up first out of 800 people, the last one to leave. I was actually walking in with the vice president. <laughs> so never forget, do the little things to compensate for you not having the big thing, that being that college degree. Now, however, if you have a commitment to excellence and you become laser focused on self-development to enhance your competencies and skills, 
you can achieve greatness without or with a college degree. My friends, whether you're never going to college, considering returning to college, about to graduate from college or already have your bachelor's or master's degree, many more options exist for finding success than ever before. And it's mission critical that you do three things. One, know what you don't know. Two, read books and expand your knowledge. And three, get a mentor or hire a coach. Even if it's not me, go get a mentor or coach who can guide you, remove those roadblocks and blind spots, enhance your competencies, and work with you on the skills that you don't even realize are important because you've never worked with someone with that level of expertise. You want to provide yourself with every opportunity to combine self-development with practical experiences because that's the key to enhancing your value proposition as either an entrepreneur, blue-collar worker, or white-collar worker. And when others realize your value, they will give you a seat at the table. When they give you that seat, own it. My friends, if you covet compelling content on entrepreneurship or leadership, please hit like, share, and subscribe to my podcast now so you can be alerted to future episodes. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next episode. Carpe diem.